During the 1930s, when you were working a lot with the German patients, you did, I believe, forecast that a, a second world war was very likely. Well, now, looking at the world today, do you feel that a third world war is likely? Uh, I have no definite indications in that respect. But there are so many indications that one doesn't know what one sees. Is it trees or is it the wood? It's very difficult to say uh, because the, the dreams of uh, people's dreams contain apprehensions, you know. But it is very difficult to say uh, whether they point to a war because that idea is uppermost in people's mind. Formerly, you know, it has been much simpler. People didn't think of a war. And therefore, it was rather clear what the dreams meant. Nowadays, no more so. We are so full of apprehensions, fears, that one doesn't know exactly to what it points. But one thing is sure, a great change of our psychological attitude is imminent. That is certain. Uh, why? Because we need more. We need more psychology. We need more understanding of human nature because the only real danger that exists is man himself. He is the great danger. And we are pitifully unaware of it. We know nothing of man. Far too little. His psyche should be studied because we are the origin of all coming evil. Well, does man, do you think, need to have the concept of sin and evil to live with? Is this part of our nature? Well, obviously. And of a redeemer? That is a, an inevitable consequence. This is not a, a, a concept which will disappear as we become more rational. It's something which Well, needs... I don't believe that man ever will uh, deviate uh, from the original pattern of his being. There will always be such ideas. For instance, uh, if you do not directly believe in a personal redeemer, as it was the case with Hitler, or uh, the hero worship in Russia, uh, then it is an idea. It is a, uh, a symbolic idea. Um, you, you have written one time or another some sentences which have surprised me a little about death. Now, in particular, I, I remember you said that death is psychologically just as important as birth. And like it, it's an integral part of life. But surely it can't be like birth if it's an end, can it? Yes, if it's an end. And there we are not quite certain uh, about this end. Because, you know, there are these uh, peculiar faculties of the psyche that it isn't entirely confined to, to space and time. You can have dreams or visions of the future. You can see round corners and such things. Only ignorance deny these, uh, these facts. These are, it's quite evident that they do exist and have existed always. Now, these facts be, show that the psyche, in part at least, is not dependent upon these confinements. And then what? When the psyche is not under that obligation to live in time and space alone, and obviously it doesn't, then in, uh, to that extent the psyche is not submitted to those laws. And uh, that means a, a practical uh, um, in, uh, continuation of life, of a sort of psychical existence uh, beyond time and space. Do you yourself believe that death is probably the end, or do you, do you believe that... Well, I, I can't say... You see, the word belief is a, dif a difficult thing for me. I don't believe. I must have a reason uh, 
for, for a certain hypothesis. Either I know a thing, and when I know it, I don't be, need to believe it. If I, I don't allow myself, for instance, to be, believe a thing just for the sake of believing it. Uh, I, I can't believe it. But when there are sufficient reasons to, for a certain hypothesis, I shall accept these reasons, naturally, and should say, we have to reckon with the possibility of so-and-so, uh, -so, you know. Well, now, you've told us that we should regard death as being a goal, yes. and that to shrink away from it is to evade life and yes. evade life purposes. Yes. Uh, what advice would you give to people in their later life to enable them to do this, when most of them must, in fact, believe that death is the end of everything? Mm -hmm. Well, you see, it is, you know, I have treated many old people, and it's quite interesting to, to watch what the unconscious is doing with the fact that it is apparently threatened with a complete end. Uh, it disregards it. it. Life behaves as if it were going on. And uh, so I think it is better for all people to live on, to, to look forward to the next day, uh, as if uh, he had to spend centuries, and then he lives properly. But when he is afraid, when he doesn't look forward, when he looks back, he petrifies, he, he, he gets uh, stiff, and, and uh, he dies before his time. But when he is living on, looking forward to the great adventure that is ahead, then he lives. And that is about what the unconscious is intending to do. Of course, it's quite obvious that we are all going to, to die, and this is uh, the, the, the sad fi finale of everything. Um, but uh, nevertheless, there is something in us that doesn't believe it, apparently. But it, this is merely a fact, a psychological fact. Uh, for, for doesn't mean to me that it proves something. It is simply so. For instance, I may not know why we need salt, but we prefer to eat salt too, because you feel better. And so when you think in a certain way, you may feel considerably better. And I think if you think along the lines of nature, then you think properly. And this leads me to the last question that I want to ask you. As the world becomes more technically efficient, it seems increasingly necessary for people to behave communally and collectively. Now, do you think it's possible that the highest development of man may be to submerge his own individuality in a kind of collective consciousness? That's hardly possible. I think there will be a, a, a reaction. A reaction will set in against uh, this uh, communal uh, uh, dissociation. You know, man doesn't stand forever his nullification. Once there will be uh, a reaction. And uh, I, see, I see it setting in, you know, when I think of my patients, they all seek their own existence and to assure their existence against that complete atomization into nothingness or into meaninglessness. Man cannot stand a meaningless life.